Please, please welcome back to the show, Eddie Izzard! It's a bit weird, but I'm good. What's weird about it? I tried to jump a fence. It was, uh, I'd gone through, I was running along, you know, getting back into training, because I'd had, i tried to do these marathons before. And I was going through the thing, and people recognized, hey, Eddie, uh, do you want to know how to get down? Said, no, no, I've got a map, you know, I'm Google mapping my way. So oh, I'm fine. And the map says you can go all the way through the back of the golf course. Right. You can't. But they put a fence around that. The fence had been pushed down by stinging nettles. And like I was, like I was a kid in stinging yeah. nettles. So I knew I had to spring over this thing and not get stung. And in avoidance of not getting stung, I did a big push off on the left leg. Right. And uh, as what, one would do, as one would do, and as you did when you were a kid, you right. know, and had that elasticity. And I seem to have lost elasticity over the last <laughs> seventy-three decades of my life. <laughs> and and the fence was that high in the end. It was that high. <laughs> Once it was down, I was trying to. I was just, but I just wanted to do a big spring, and, and that big spring said, "This is gonna go." <laughs> so, so that's what happened. So how are you dealing with the aging thing then? Um, I, well, I, I also, I am, I'm 2.8% Neanderthal. Yes. We're all between 1 and 4% Neanderthal. Well, here, watch including, this clip here, watch this clip here. Remember when I told you I'd found some extraordinary DNA in your genome? Oh, right, yeah. This is extraordinary time. Well, now I'm going to tell you where it came from. Okay. You are 2.8% Neanderthal. Whoa! Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You just happen to have that there? Yeah, I was ready for it. I wanted to play that for you. But do you, if I mention other things, do you, do you just go, no, we have a clip of that too? Is that, I or do you just happen to have that one there? We happen to have that one ready to go because I wanted to ask you about it, because I know that everybody has a bit of Neanderthal, but you're yeah. in the higher end of the spectrum. Well, apparently so, but uh, the good end of it, I think. <laughs> but even the queen is, is between 1% and 4% Neanderthal. So, because we do tend to, because the, because the eyebrow ridge, right. we go, oh, they weren't smart fellows. But they could have had that huge eyebrow ridge and gone, now, now, sit down, Simon, I want to tell you something. Um, <laughs> and talk, let's talk about Nietzsche, who doesn't exist yet, or something, you know. It would be beautiful as for a tour called Force Majeure. I mean, you're hard to stop. You're an act of God, then, or act of nature, or act of something. Force of nature. I yeah, think yeah, force yeah. of nature. Yeah. I'm going with a force of nature. That's how you want to define it? Yeah, because it, it, you know, it's act of God in contracts, but it's also force of nature, really, because it says when there's a tsunami, which is an act of God, but there is no God, so therefore it must be a force of nature. Right. Now, of course, there could be a God, right. but if so, he's got a lot of questions to answer. Right. And if he came down here, he would not get elected. You don't think so? No. He'd if God came down, if there was one who was right, or if nine, say there's nine, it says it's just us nine, and we have a big table. And uh, but say so they <laughs> came down, we'd say World War Two. What? And by the way, thank you, Canada for uh, World War II, for really, you know, coming in, because you guys just came, and Australians came, and New Zealanders came, so yeah. I like to say thank you, because I don't think the Brits say that a lot. And, um, uh, no, I know this stuff. And uh, <laughs> so God has got to answer, you know, because he should have flicked Hitler's head off, as I've said before. Yeah. He should have, he should have worked, he should have went, because Hitler's, the first two kids of Mrs. Schickelgruber uh, died in infancy. Right. Di first two died in infancy. So couldn't that have just gone one more? And then she could have had 23 kids after that who were nice right. Schickelgrubers. And so do you, do, you, do you think that if, if, if the other two had lived, one or the other two had lived, that maybe it would have been a different scenario for young Adolf? I don't know. But you just, if, if there was a God, you'd think when she got the baby, she went, look, this one's, ah, oh, the head's come off. Ah. <laughs> oh. Ah. Oh. So, oh, that one doesn't work. What do you think, Mr. Sugar Group? We'll go for another? <laughs> and change your name to Big Ed or something, I don't know. Well, look at your nails, Ruth. You've got the flag, right? And then you've got the, you've got the European yeah, Union British flag. British European transvestite. That's my political statement in Ten Fingers. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but that one is kind of contentious, and, you know, in, in England rather than necessarily the UK or the rest of Europe, but because... Uh, it's all about laws. It's like states' rights, that American thing. I don't know if you have your province rights in Canada, yeah. but it's, uh, that's what goes on there. But I'm very positive on Europe. It's what humanity does. We gradually come together. We gradually mm -hmm. get fairer rules for everyone. So... Um, you did Moscow. Um, did you deal with the political stuff that's going on there? Well, I didn't go in and, 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 and start swinging, because I really... I, wa I want to go and learn Russian and, and do more in Russian. I really want to have Russian learnt after I've done German, Spanish, then, and then Russian, because and I feel that's my way of going in. I want Russia to change its laws. I, well, I feel that Margaret Thatcher brought in uh, anti... Uh, 
homosexuality laws in the mid 80s in a democrat a country that's supposed to have had democracy for you know 250 years 300 years whatever we're supposed to have it in the uk and so you know countries can go backwards humanitarian wise but I, I just want russia to turn around and start heading forwards again the world can be a tough old place but there is less violence in the world there's a book called the better angels of our nature mm -hmm. and it's all about there is way less violence in the world than there was before we do have weapons that are far more Disgusting, but, but weirdly enough, there seems to be way more violence in television. So people always tell us, oh, you know, you have to watch what you put on TV because it'll affect culture. But as crime rates go down and violence goes down, TV gets even wilder. Think of the stuff that's on even a show like Hannibal. Go back to years and years ago, in the glory days, so-called, of television, they would never have had a series like that. So is it the... We just want to watch it as opposed to experience it? It could be. I mean, isn't there nothing... There's nothing cosier. Hannibal is obviously quite out there. But, you know, there, there was... Um, those uh, Poirot-type movies, the, the Agatha Christie's. There's nothing cosier, and some very safe middle-class people from around the world will just get themselves into bed or into a, into a comfy sofa with a cup of Horlicks, smoke cup of coffee, and watch, ah, oh, there's a dead person. How did they die? Oh, they died like that. And then, and it's... <laughs> And there's nothing cosier than to start off with a death at the beginning of a thing or murder she wrote. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't injury she wrote. She didn't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a bad leg. Who did that bad leg to that person? He hit him with a, with a, with a bat? Oh, that's terrible. Injury she wrote. Slight crick of the knee she wrote. No, no, no. I was here first. You have to form a queue if you want food. Uh, can I have a... Uh, oh, Penny Ella Arabiante. That'd be very nice. No, no, no. Do, do you know who I am? That's Jeff Vader, that is. I am not Jeff Vader, I'm Darth Vader. <laughs> what, Jeff Vader runs the Death Star? No, Jeff... No, I run the Death Star. You Jeff Vader? No, I'm Darth Vader. But you're his brother. Can you get his autograph? I can't get it. No, I'm Jeff... All right, I'm Jeff Vader. I'm Jeff Vader. I love that. <laughs> I'm back here with Eddie Izzard. A fan video made for you. Yes, that's Thorn2200 made that. Yeah. And uh, I think... It's, it's got over 20 million hits, but it might even have more. I think he had to take it down and put it back up again. But I'm now in, in force majeure as I'm touring across uh, Canada. I do the sequel to the Death Star Canteen, because that was all based upon uh, Darth Vader going down to the canteen on the Death Star and ordering Penny a la Arabiata, Penny a la Arabiata <laughs> and I'm saying, the woman says, no, you need a tray. She says, no, I don't need a tray. And in the, in the sequel, God comes down and with a deep voice, and who's also picked up scuba diving and <laughs> doing all that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, he orders spaghetti carbonara, which is saved for Darth Vader. And then it goes into another one of these things. And they don't use trays anymore because they've been banned because there were fights with them. <laughs> Anthropology. Who's someone you should genuinely thank? Nelson Mandela. Someone you should say sorry to? Nelson Mandela. Why Nelson Mandela? Uh, 27 years in prison. You should say sorry to? Well, just generally. OK, fair enough. You know? <laughs> On behalf of everybody? On behalf of scumbags. <laughs> Finish this sentence. Comedy is best when it's... Funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> truthful. <laughs> Are you still planning on running for the mayor of London? Yep. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Well... What's that based on? Just, uh, <laughs> no, well done, well done. I could be terrible. You but could be a terrible mayor. I could be like some of your mess. Um, <laughs> you've got a whole mayor thing going on. Well, we figured. No, I'm not. Yeah, I've just, all I, I've just heard stories about Toronto and Montreal. Yeah. That's all I've heard. And the rest of your mayors are fantastic, yes? Yeah, we have some good mayors in this country. Yes. So I'm, I hopefully will be like those mayors. <laughs> it's not that all Canadian mayors. I just, I just thought, when I was in Montreal, they were saying, have you heard about the, the mayor? I went, yeah. I got here, they said, you heard about the mayor? What, the Montreal mayor? No, the Toronto mayor. Ah. Well, so, they were disease. both competing to be the sadly funniest con uh, mayor in the country, so we figured, why don't you compete to be the funniest mayor of your country then? Well, no, I'm trying to do an Al Franken. If, if people in Canada know about Senator Al Franken, who came from the world of comedy, went into being a senator of Min, uh, Minnesota and has really just got his head down and got on with it. I want to break all the energy of doing gigs in different languages, of, of touring around and, and playing lots of crazy places, of doing marathon running, of all this stuff. I'm going to bring that energy into it and hopefully do something positive. I can think in a different way. I can see things in a slightly different light. Do you already know what your mayoral slogan's gonna be? Uh, well, I know what my life slogan is. We can all do more than we think we can do. That's a good one, actually. That's really nice. That's, and that's what I discovered from the mountain.
Running the marathons didn't prove what I could do, it proved what we can all do, because everyone looks at me and goes, that guy's not a runner, and, whoa, he did all that, and, um, all right. If the world were ending tonight, what would you want to be wearing? <laughs> uh, ooh. This is an important question, young man. I know, what's going on for my... Comfortable, comfortable shoes. What a pleasure to be with you, as always. Eddie Azard, everybody. <laughs>